Uh, driveway style, F30 oil change, late afternoon, cloudy with a chance of meatballs. What's up everyone, Nate Vincent here with FC Bureau. We're gonna be showing you how to do a oil change on a BMW 328 F30 chassis, just like the car behind me. Uh, now, what we need to do this job is we need some liquid molly oil right here. This is the kit purchased from FC Bureau. It includes the filter, uh, the drain plug, and any associated O-rings needed for the job. Uh, we're gonna use some rubber gloves just to keep the oil off our fingers so we stay nice and clean. We have a 10 millimeter Allen wrench to get the drain plug out. And of course, we have this nice CTA oil filter wrench sold on the site uh, with a ratchet to turn it. Now, if you don't have this, you can also use a strap wrench to get that oil filter housing loose, but we do recommend purchasing this tool. It'll make your life a whole lot easier. Now, we're gonna be doing this job driveway style, so we're going to be jacking the car up with a normal hydraulic jack, putting some jack stands under the car, and rolling under it ourselves. We're gonna be doing it just the way you would be doing a DIY at home to help you along the way. Now let's jump into the job and let's get this oil changed. One of the beauties about this car is on the rear wheel drive model, the drain plug is almost towards the, towards the very back side of the oil pan. And so by jacking the front up, you actually really kind of make all the oil drain out of the oil pan, which makes it really easy to do these jobs in your driveway. Um, so we don't actually have to remove this underbelly pan at all. We're just going to pull this down here. I have a little pick just to help me out. So we just pull this little access panel right there. And you can see right here is the drain plug. All right, so here we are with a little paper towel. Just, just give it a good wipe down. Make sure it's good and clean. Now remember your kit comes with a new drain plug, so we're not gonna have to reuse this, but I just don't want any debris getting in there. All right, move that to the side. Allen wrench in. So now that the oil is draining, we're going to lift, uh, take off the oil cap right there, make sure that there's no vacuum in the engine and that everything can drain out. And now we're going to loosen up the oil filter housing um, and loosen up the filter out of there. So grabbing a clean rag um, in my CTA oil filter wrench, just going to loosen this up. Now kind of go slow with this because if you pull it out too quickly, all the oil just drips around the edges. Let it really drain down. Just like that. And I can grab this with a rag and get it away from the engine. Now watch the oil go down right in there. You can see it draining out as we go. So right here we have the filter housing from the car. Uh, we went ahead and pulled the old oily filter out and threw it away. Um, so now we just have the filter housing here. We're gonna go quickly replace the two O-rings on it. We have a green O-ring at the bottom, and then we have the normal sealing O-ring at the top. Uh, so what I like to do is just set it down, take a pick, and very carefully pry the O-rings loose. They tend to get a little brittle over time, so just get them out of here. We got the green O-ring loose, and the top O-ring, again, just carefully pull that loose, set that aside. Um, and now we'll go install the new ones. So first, the big one. I massage it on there. I tend to like to take a, a pick from my finger and just run it around the outside, make sure that O-ring isn't twisted up on itself and binding in any way, and then take a little of the excess oil. That's just kind of on my gloves and on this and just wipe around that O-ring to make sure it doesn't snag on when we thread it in. Um, now with the green O-ring, the tiny little green O-ring that goes right on the end. Again, put a little oil on there and just make sure that's gonna rotate nicely in the housing. And then the last thing is we take the filter. It doesn't matter which way, one side has writing on it, one side doesn't. Um, it's universal, it can go this way or this way. But what we wanna do is we just wanna slide the filter on here and make sure it's pressed all the way in, just like that. Now, once we have this unit ready, we're gonna go over to the car and we're gonna thread it in. So now that we have the new filter housing uh, with the filter installed, we're just gonna basically place that in there, start the thread, uh, by hand, make sure it's not cross-threading. And once you get that O-ring starting to seat down and it's gonna be a little bit harder to twist, um, I take the CTA wrench here and tighten it down. Now you see here it says 25 Newton meters. So that's about, I think it's about 15 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, so really not too tight on this. You wanna, you wanna just kinda snug it down and make sure that O-ring seals. Right there, just a little snug, and that's it. 
So now that we have the oil filter housing reinstalled, uh, before we add oil, there's one last thing we need to do, and that is to install the new drain plug. Uh, so these drain plugs are one-time use. Um, they're a 10 millimeter max torque of eight newton meters. That's really low max torque, so you've gotta be really, really careful when installing these, um, and you always wanna replace them uh, because they have an O-ring and they kind of have a snap tight uh, fitting. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull this back, grab my rag here, just kind of wipe around the edges, make sure it's nice and clean. We're not getting any, uh, you know, any interference on the fit. And now I'm gonna take the drain plug supplied with the kit, and I'm just going to finger, start that uh, with my fingers to about there when it catches. And then I'm gonna take my 10 millimeter Allen and tighten that down. Oops. I'm gonna draw my 10 millimeter Allen. Oh. Yeah, exactly. So tighten this down. You can hear it clicking. So now it's pretty tight, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a snug. Like I said, no more than eight newton meters, right about there. Maybe one more, nope, oh, one more. Yep, that's it right there. Um, so this basically has little snap fittings that hold it from loosening up, and the O-ring really does the seal, so you wanna make sure you do not tighten that too tight. Um, really, you shouldn't even have to do more than that right there. So now that that's sealed up, we we'll are just wipe it down one last time, make sure everything's good and clean. And we can close this. Um, on this particular car, it's missing. There's usually a little half circle uh, lock that, can, that spins around here to lock this panel up. Um, this one must have gotten ripped off at some point, uh, so it's not there. But just be aware, if it's there, you just have to spin it 90, um, 180 degrees and the panel will open up. All right, so here we are with a five liter jug of oil. Uh, we're gonna add pretty much the entire thing to the car. Um, I'm gonna leave a little bit out of it just because this car is somewhere between four and a half liters and five liters typically. Um, so what I'm gonna do is add about four and a half liters uh, we'll let the car down off the jacks, make sure it's nice and level. We'll check the oil uh, using the onboard diagnostics um, that are included with the car. You basically just go to the service mode using the iDrive. Uh, we'll check the oil level at that point and then we'll add any oil um, required just to get it right up to that max fill line. Um, so adding the oil, we're going to pop this Licomale open, pull it up like that, loosen up the plug, and then we have a little popper Once we're done with that, um, we're gonna pour it right into the engine. Now put the oil cap back on, make sure good and snug, and we're ready to let the car down off the jack stands. All right, so here we are in the car after doing oil change. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start the engine and make sure that we don't get an oil pressure light uh, make sure everything sounds right, it's not too loud, any, anything like that, we don't get any warnings. Now once we do that, we're then going to take the car for a quick drive around the block and get the engine up to temperature. Then we're gonna use the iDrive in the car to check the oil level, make sure it's where it needs to be and that we don't need to add any engine oil. All right, so starting the car. So aside from telling me the hood's open, I have no warning lights here. We're ready to go test drive the car. We're gonna test drive the car for about 10 minutes to make sure the engine gets to, to operating temperature. Now remember, it takes a little bit longer for the oil to get to temperature than it does for coolant to get to temperature. Um, so it may take a little longer than you expect. And then we'll come back on a flat surface and we'll go check the oil using the iDrive. So here we are, we just got back from our test drive. The car is warmed up and I'm gonna show you how to check the oil level uh, with the iDrive system. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start the car up, just like normal. And then using the centerpiece here, we are going go to go back to the main menu. So you can just hit the menu button. We're going to scroll down to vehicle info. And we are gonna go to vehicle status and right here you're gonna see engine oil level and then measure engine oil level. So we're gonna select measure at engine oil level and we're gonna hit this. And it's gonna tell you basically whether you're ready to measure it. Right here it's saying it's, we're ready to measure it. We're just gonna hit start measurement. And there we go. We have the oil measurement. We're right at the max line, right where I expected to be. 
and so we're good to go. All right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, doing an oil change on a 328 F30 chassis is really not that difficult. It's definitely something that can be done at home, and you can, can you can take control over your car's maintenance yourself.